In this presentation, we will take a look at part five of our C Corporation comprehensive problem, this time focusing in on depreciation schedules. Here we are in our form 1120. Last time we left off with page six, we had entered the beginning balances for the balance sheet. We said that we had these beginning balances for the accumulated depreciation and the depreciation depreciable assets, which we would typically get from the balance sheet, but those would typically be supported by the depreciation schedule. So we really need to have the depreciation schedules when you're first doing the data input, and they, those should be supporting these two numbers. Now, our depreciation schedules are going to look like this. They, they, they're for the current year for 2019, but we're going to pretend, pretend here. These are the prior year uh, depreciation schedules. So we got uh, the depreciation, the depreciable assets tying out to the 1700000 And then we're just focused on the prior year depreciation, which is going to be that uh, 289.387. Now, if you're talking about a depre now this is for book. If we look at the tax depreciation schedules, here's the tax depreciation schedules. Now, if if we were working with a company that basically is having their their tax return on solely a tax basis, in other words, they're keeping their book depreciation on a tax basis, then we would only need one depreciation schedule. But the larger the company is, the more likely that they're going to be forced to 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 use, and it might be beneficial to use a book depreciation, which will differ from the tax depreciation, which complicates. Uh, the situation with regards to depreciation. So what we're going to do here is is enter this these schedules into our system. We're going to have the book depreciation and the tax depreciation, and that information su should support these numbers and should help the tax system to then calculate the ending balance in terms of the property, plant, and equipment as well as the accumulated depreciation. So we're going to then go into our data input. We're going to be going into the uh, deductions. We want in to go to the depreciation. This is just what it looks like in LACERT. You're going to have a similar kind of input screen for other types of tax software. Uh, so then we're going to, and this will be the supporting data. If you don't have the tax software, this is the, basically the supporting data for the calculation of the depreciation. So we're going to we're going to go back over, and we're going to we're going to start with the uh, federal which is the tax depreciation because this is the one that's going to be the primary entry that you'll typically have in the software and we got to figure out what the depreciation rates are for the tax depreciation the method that will be used typically a maker's method if we're talking about machinery and equipment or most you know normal type of, of depreciation that we'll have so for machinery and equipment typically we'll have makers it'll, which is kind of a form of double declining balance and this little HY indicates that it is a half year convention. In other words, normally under general conditions, we would consider whatever equipment was purchased whenever it was purchased during whatever year as if it was purchased in the middle of the year, because that kind of makes the calculation a little bit easier than breaking it down to the month or to the day of the year. Uh, there's exceptions to that rule, but that's the general rule. So we're going to keep this and we're going to put this into the system. Now, also note that if it, when you put equipment into the system, you don't want it this generic. You don't want to say like equipment one. Even if you bought a batch of equipment together, you would typically want to put it into the system breaking up. Like if you bought five forklifts, you want to break it out into five forklifts and have their social security, have the, their social security, their license number, their product number on it in some way. So that when you sell them, you can identify which one you sold. So this is just going to be a practice problem, but just realize that in, in real life, you'd, you'd want to break that up. Now, if you got a depreciation schedule from somewhere else and they grouped everything together and everything's uh, not very well defined, it is what it is. You're going to have to push forward from, from, that, from that point and then work with, with what you have, obviously. So this is what we have. And so it's going to be the equipment one and equipment uh, two. So we're going to go back to our schedule and we're going to say this is going to be equipment one. Equipment one, and I'm going to say that the form is going to be the 1120 form. The category is going to be for the machinery. The date it was played is placed in service. I'm going to be picking up from our data over here. I want the tax one I was on. And that's going to be the uh, 1117. So 010117. The cost or basis then is going to be the 50,000 for the first one. So I'm going to put 50,000. Uh, we're not going to put any current information in it. We're entering the last year's data. The method that we're going to be using, and that's indicated here, is going to be the uh, 200 double declining. That's in a half-year convention. That's basically a maker's seven-year method. So we're going to say, all right, that's the maker's seven-year method. 
So we're gonna go down, I'm gonna say that we want seven year and uh, the makers, there it is. And then 179, no prior year special depreciation, no prior year depreciation or amortization. Now I'm gonna put the prior year depreciation. We didn't have anything for the 179 prior year or any special depreciation. Therefore, we only have the uh, prior year, which is gonna be the 30,000. 30,000 prior year depreciation for the first piece. There we have it. Now we're going to go to the next piece of equipment, which is uh, called Equipment 2. Very descriptive name. And that is also going to be going to the 1120, category number 3, Machinery and Equipment, also on the books as of 010117. This one then is at the cost of 1650000. So I'm going to say 1650000. The method also. Uh, makers seven year convention or makers seven year useful life and then we're going to say half year convention for the makers and that's going to be prior year depreciation 350,000 so I'm going to go all right prior year depreciation 350,000 all right now let's go and, and see if it if it does what we expect so far I'm going to go back to the forms and I'm going to go back to the depreciation schedule for 2019. Now we have a summary schedule, but I like to look at the regular here because that's going to show us all the special and stuff if we need to. So I'm going to go here. We've got the total on the books at the 1,650,000 and the 50. That ties out to what we have here for this 1,700,000. So that's right. And then we're going to go over to the uh, depreciation, which prior year depreciation is the 380. So the 380, so that looks good. And you'll note then, of course, we're using the same method, the 200 uh, dB uh, HY, which you can see we input as a maker's depreciation. So this is basically the maker's method, double declining balance, half year convention, seven year useful life. And this is basically the rate uh, that is being applied here. And then, we, and then this is the current year depreciation. Now remember, the data that we had obviously wouldn't be 2019 it would be 2018 and we would be taking the current year depreciation from 2018 to put it into the prior year in 2019 so just keep that in mind so that's what we have here now this this ties out this makes sense where you're like does this make sense well that uh one million seven and that 380 uh is that what's in our tax return on page we got one million seven ties out but not the 380 and that's because this is on a, the schedule L is on a book basis and we just entered the tax basis into the system. So now we got to consider what the book basis that would be entered into the system is. So we've got kind of half of it down there. So we're going to enter the book side now and the book side is going to be this schedule. So we have obviously the, the same equipment was put in place, same cost. The things that's going to differ are the prior year depreciation which uh, prior year depreciation was 20 and the 269.387. So let's put that in for a book basis now. Going back to our system here, we're gonna say this one's up top. I'm gonna scroll down to where the book information is being input. And so I'm gonna scroll down here and we're gonna say, all right, here's the book information. The cost or basis is the same. Now I'm gonna use a straight line method. It's using straight line, I think, right? It's using straight line. Yeah, straight line. So no half year convention, which means we have to basically, uh, if you go into the methods and you see that, you're gonna say, ah, well, we have a maker's SL, which is straight line, seven year. That's not what we, I, w I want just a straight, straight line this time. So, this, this, so I'm gonna go down all the way down to the bottom here. I just want straight line. And then I'm gonna have it seven year right below it. And there we have that. Now we also need the prior year depreciation for this first piece of equipment, which was the 20,000. So we're going to say 20,000 here. There we have that. And then, uh, so that prior declining balance depreciation. So then I'm going to go to the second piece of equipment and do the same process. I'm going to scroll down to the depreciation entry down here. There's going to be our method. This too was, I believe, a straight line, seven years. So it's gonna be straight line, seven year. That looks good. Gonna scroll down all the way down to that straight line. That's the method we want. We want it to be seven year. And then we're gonna go down to the prior year depreciation. 
and that's going to be for the amount of 289387. So it's going to be 289387. So there we have that. Then let's go to our forms, see if it does what we would expect. We're going to go to the book area. And so then we have our same amounts here for the cost, the 1,700,000. Then we have the prior year at the 20 and the 289,387 to be a total of the 309,387. So the total is 309,387. Uh, this is the tax, right? I want the book. So the so we've got the prior year depreciation. Here's the book. It's there it is. Okay, so 389387 for the prior year uh, depreciation. So that looks good. Now if we go back to the software, we can then think, well, what's gonna happen in in the next time period or, or what's gonna happen, you know, for 2019? It should be able to calculate the depreciation for us. So for example, if I was gonna go to the first page of the eleven twenty now and scroll down to the depreciation, there's the depreciation being calculated for us. It's at the 297330. Is that the book method or is that the tax method that's being calculated? Well, it's a 297330. If we scroll back over, that's the tax depreciation that's being on the first page of the 1120. So it's picking up the tax depreciation there. Now, what about the book depreciation? If I go to the, if I go to the last page, you would think this difference right here, we entered the balance sheet on a book basis. So you would think that the difference between these two would be on a on a book basis. So if I was to take, for example, the uh, 586717 minus the 289387, it should, you would think that would be the book basis, but it looks like that's the tax basis, right? If I go back over here to our schedule, uh, we have that's the difference is the tax basis. So note that the default in this software is to use the tax basis and and note there's no M1 adjustment down here either. There's no M1 adjustment related to the book and taxes. So to get that adjustment, then what would happen is you'd have to say, hey, I want you to record the tax base depreciation uh, on on you know have the difference the M1 adjustment for the depreciation the difference between the depreciation between book and taxes to do that we go into the balance sheet miscellaneous in the software and then we're going to go into the uh, book value here and I'm going to say use the book value basically and then I'm going to go back to my forms and now you see an M1 adjustment happen here and you'll see up top that if we take this difference now between the accumulated depreciation in the current year 532244 and the 289387 we have the 242857 which if we go to the depreciation is the book depreciation now so we're saying the difference is going to be the 242857 so the, and the reason I want to point this out at this point is because this is how the system would probably have it if you were to roll forward the software from the prior year to the current year. Now we might want to make an adjustment to that if if we're when we're starting to when we're starting to do the data input. In other words, I would like to have my system set up at the beginning where I don't have any M1 adjustments yet because the M1 adjustments going to kind of throw things off. So therefore, when we start to enter the depreciation you may already have this set up that that miscellaneous setting to be set and we may reverse that next time uh, just so that we can first start to think about this inputting the data without the m1 and then we'll add the m1 back in as we as we look at these items one by one so we'll start thinking about that next time